Hi, I'm Dave for General Equipment Company and today, in this segment, we'll show you the basic steps of how to attach an auger to the powerhead of the 242H Epic Series hole digger. We'll also show you how to operate the unit once the auger is attached. From an application standpoint, the 242H hole digger is intended to dig holes in a variety of soils from sandy loams to hard caliche for such things as building a fence or deck. The machine is designed to be operated by one physically capable adult person. For that reason, no miners should be allowed to operate the unit. Make sure clothing is sturdy, snug fitting, but allows for freedom of movement. Never wear shorts, tennis shoes, or loose fitting clothing that can become caught on controls or moving parts when digging. Finally, it is very important that you call the appropriate service program in your area to locate and mark all underground utilities before digging any holes. The tools or gear you will need are the following. Safety glasses. Hearing protection, gloves, sturdy boots. With that, let's get things rolling and attach the auger to the powerhead. First, set the hole digger powerhead on the ground with the top of the engine facing up. Second, face the powerhead with the throttle control positioned on your right side. Using your left hand, tilt the powerhead up onto the left side of the operator handle. With your free hand, slide the auger hub onto the drive shaft of the powerhead, then let the assembly rest on the operator handle and the end of the auger. From there, align the auger pin holes in the drive shaft and the auger hub. Next, insert the factory supplied auger pin into the hole and secure it by closing the safety pin. When ready, tilt the assembly up into a vertical position, resting it on the tip of the auger. So, before we cover the actual operation of the hole digger, let's talk about what a proper operator stance looks like. The stance itself is quite easy to perform. First, position the hole digger so the right hand operates the throttle control and the left hand is on the left side of the operator handle. Using a firm, steady grip, cradle the throttle control and operator handle between thumbs and forefingers. Next, place your feet a comfortable distance apart, approximately shoulder width, with the left foot slightly ahead of the right foot. Keep the left side of the operator handle as close as possible to your waist and leg to maximize leverage and control. While digging, keep your back as vertical as possible and bend your legs as needed to minimize stress. If done properly, you should not be standing anything like what is being shown now. With knowledge of a proper stance under your belt, let's cover how to properly start the hole digger with an auger attached. Before getting started, confirm that the auger lock handle pin is in the upper right, unlocked position. This position ensures that the auger lock has not been activated and will not impede auger rotation while digging. Next, place the hole digger vertically in the desired location and get into the proper operating stance. With your right hand, turn the engine on off ignition switch to the on position. With your left hand, depress the engine primer bulb twice until fuel can be seen in the primer bulb. If the engine is cold or the ambient air temperature is low, move the choke control lever to the closed, far left position. This fully closed position will be furthest from the fuel tank. Keep in mind, a warm, previously run engine may not require choking. Next, grip the throttle control with your right hand and using your free hand, pull the engine starter handle slowly until resistance is felt. At that point, return the starter handle to its original position and pull swiftly allowing the starter handle to retract slowly. Repeat this until the engine starts. Note, more pulls may be required in cold weather. Here are some additional starter tips that can be of help. Regardless of the air temperature, you do not need to rotate the throttle control to start the machine. To prevent damage to the recoil starter, do not pull the starter rope out to its maximum length. With this, let's move on to the next step. After the engine is started, allow it to warm up properly. As the engine warms, move the choke lever to the open, far right position to prevent the engine from stalling. Finally, rotate the throttle control counterclockwise slowly, checking for proper clutch operation, excessive noise, and vibration as engine speed is increased. With the engine now ready to go, you can begin digging the hole. To do so, rotate the throttle control counterclockwise to increase the engine speed. The auger will begin to turn once the engine reaches the initial clutch engagement speed. As digging progresses, keep these tips in mind. Digging a hole is normally done by operating the engine at full speed. If you're digging in areas with known, buried obstructions such as rocks or roots, an accepted industry practice is to dig at an intermediate speed. This ensures a quicker release of the clutch if an obstruction is encountered. 
Use the proper operator stance and grip to counter any kickback generated by the digging process or when obstructions are encountered. Keep the left side of the operator handle against your hip and leg as you dig. In the process of digging the hole to the desired depth, do not dig until the power head touches the ground. If this happens, the auger can become stuck in the hole. Moving forward, follow the next two steps depending on whether more holes are to be dug or not. If more holes are required, when moving between holes, stop the hole digger by rotating the throttle control clockwise until the engine returns to its idle speed. Next, turn the engine on off ignition switch to the off position. From there, proceed to the next hole location and restart the engine following the steps previously covered in this video. If no more holes are needed, stop the hole digger as shown previously then disconnect the auger from the power head. That does it for this segment. Detailed safety instructions and information about what was covered is in the operator manual that came with the machine or in a copy of the manual located on our website at generalequip.com. If you have questions or need further assistance, please feel free to give us a call at 800-533-0524 or email us at support at generalequip.com. We are here to make you successful and we'll be glad to help you in any way possible.